My name is Dalma Dojcek. I'm a lawyer based in Budapest, Hungary, and I work for the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union, and I'm the head of the Freedom of Speech program here. In Hungary, as in many states around the world, the government and the people in the power positions are uh, entitled and they are in favor of uh, the restriction of freedom of speech, the restriction of freedom of expression. That is what happens in every country because those who are in power, uh, they want those who can criticize them to be censored or to be silenced. That is quite normal. In Hungary, because of the special political circumstances and because of the, uh, the special ma majority of the governing uh, parties in the, in the parliament, uh, this can happen quite easily because of the legislation and because of the laws that are enacted by the government. For example, in Hungary, uh, libel and defamation are crimes. They are uh, sanctioned by the uh, by the uh, criminal co uh, criminal courts and by by the criminal co uh, code of Hungary, and these are crimes like bribery or theft. These are something that for a journalist or someone who uh, forms an opinion has to go to the court, and uh, they will find them probably guilty because of uh, criticizing for example, a politician or someone in power. Uh, I think this is a big problem and uh, decriminalization of defamation and libel would be quite important for Hungary because these uh, crimes or these pieces of legislation are quite often used by the politicians to silence those who criticize them. A quite famous and funny example is uh, the case of Peter Uy. Uh, he's a journalist. And uh, in 2009, he wrote uh, an article about a uh, wine that is produced by the state-owned winery. And this wine was quite low quality. And he, he wrote a long article about how bad this wine is, but uh, the punchline of this article was that this wine is really shitty. It's a piece of shit, basically. And uh, he was criminally prosecuted because of this article and he was found guilty of the crime of defamation in Hungary. The final sentence of the Hungarian courts was that this was criminal defamation, and he was fined for a quite high amount of money. After this, uh, the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union uh, took his case to the Strasbourg Court of uh, European Court of Human Rights, and there the court ruled that this kind of criticism is fair and it's, it has to be legal, especially because this was a state-owned state winery and the wine was produced on state funds, on public funds. And this is why this kind of criticism has to be tolerated by those who produce that wine. A new uh, piece of legislation that is quite, uh, quite new is the, is the media legislation, uh, the so-called Media Acts, and they are from 2010, and they are uh, quite restricting, and they are one of the first uh, uh, examples of the legislation of the new uh, government and majority in the parliament. They were just uh, enacted after uh, the now governing uh, parties won the former election in 2010. and. Uh, they were heavily criticized uh, all over Europe and even the bird. Uh, and uh, they are really uh, strict on media legislation and they are really strict on uh, how the media should work and their scope, the act of the media, act, the media laws uh, scope are uh, really wide, uh, both uh, online and offline media. Uh, both print and television, radio, these are all under the effect of the same piece of legislation. These laws are 
formed to encourage self-censorship. And not just the media laws, but other le pieces of legislation that I talked about earlier, for example, uh, criminal libel and, def and defamation. The whole picture of the legislation connecting to the media in Hungary is quite threatening. It's really a risky business to run uh, a media outlet. You have to keep in mind many, many pieces of legislation, and it's, sometimes it's better just not to write about something or not to be really criti criti critical uh, towards the government because you can uh, be legally persecuted because of an opinion or, a, or an article. So many media outlets prefer not to be really critical or not to write about risky things. They prefer to uh, well, write about gossips and uh, uh, tabloids. Uh, magazines are quite popular, but those that make really uh, that those that write about heavy political uh, subjects and uh, really risky businesses of the political elite of Hungary are quite rare and they think twice when they write about something that can be edgy. Since we have a, um, a constitutional court that is independent from the normal court system, we can also uh, invoke the decisions of the constitutional court, court when we litigate before the normal court. And we try to do that, that uh, we try to do strategic litigation in a way that uh, we pick really important uh, cases. And these really important cases are uh, taken before the constitutional court. We try to win the case before the constitutional court and the constitutional court normally ju doesn't just decide the case but it it decides about the id behind the case and it has really strong uh, quotable sentences about freedom of spe speech and why it is important and why it is, should be enforced by the courts and then when we won that this case before the constitutional court we try to find similar cases and they try to implement the decision of the constitutional court in other cases, and we try to uh, win them before ordinary courts. I really believe in courts. I really believe that the courts will, uh, will realize that they are basically the last independent and free bench of power in Hungary, and that they will be a real... Uh, a real bench of power that will enforce freedom and rights and liberties in the country. Um, the problem is that in post-socialist countries, the courts don't really have independence in a way that, for example, in Western Europe, and the individual judges are not really uh, well entitled to to this uh, position of the of the independent judge who is really uh, a key person in democracy, but I can see younger judges uh, to embrace this kind of position. So I'm, I'm quite hopeful that uh, bad legislation or bad pieces of legislation can be overridden by the courts if they realize how important their role is. I cannot really see um, a political party, an opposition political party that is capable of winning the next elections. I can see one, the far right, your big, but it is not democratic, and I wouldn't really love to be in, to live in a country where your big is the governing party. I cannot see any democratic uh, party that is able to win the next elections against Fidesz, and I'm quite. Uh, well said about the fact that many of the uh, the young people who would be able to change the system are leaving Hungary and they move to uh, Western European countries where the freedom and the, the opportunities are bigger and wider for them and I cannot really blame them. Hungary is not a dictatorship. We, we still have rights and liberties. The problem is that our, that our rights and liberties are restricted 
in a way that many people don't even realize it. They don't even understand because it, it is made, it's not obvious, it's hidden. And uh, I think my job is to, is to work against this because uh, the journalists often uh, understand that their freedom of speech is restricted, but those who read the newspapers or watch the TVs are not really aware of this problem. They don't really understand the concept of free speech or free press and why is it important. That's why they were not upset about the new media laws. They're not upset when a journalist is prosecuted before a criminal court. They are just not interested in these problems. And I think this would be our main job to make people understand why freedom of the press is important for them. Bye.